who stand on the promises of God, commit our ways to God, and they shall be established. Praise God. Verse 4. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O you, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Praise God. So he had to put himself in a position to hear what God is saying. He knew the voice of God and not the voice of a stranger. And we have to follow the voice of God and not the voice of a stranger. And then he had to obey what God said. Praise God. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you, and you shall live. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you tonight that you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I don't know what diagnosis the doctor may have given you, but you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I'm here to tell you with long life will God satisfy you and show you his salvation. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you that you can speak to pain and tell it to be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And pain has to bow its knees to the word of God. Praise God to the name of Jesus. That wonderful name, that powerful name, that exalted name, that healing name, that redeeming name. Praise God. It is the name above all names. Philippians 2 told us, you know, how, how, how Jesus, he, 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 um, he, he didn't worry about the equality. He stripped himself of all privileges. Praise God. And, and he, 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 he just went to the cross for us, you know. But after he had suffered all of that, now he's highly exalted and he's been given a name that is above every name. So after he went through the pain, praise God, after he went to hell, after every demon came upon him, every pain, every sickness, every infirmity, Isaiah 52 tells us it came to a point that, that, that Jesus was so afflicted, you know. So many demons, so many horrible things had happened to him that he was not even recognized as a man. And if he had to go through so much for us, Praise God. We will go through in this world, but we have good cheer. He has overcome the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. If, if, you, if you don't go through something, you won't have this strong fight. Praise God. Because you remember the last time when he delivered you. Praise God. He paid your bills last year. He paid them the year before and the year before and the year before. Why are you doubting? Why are you have a little fight? Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, even when um, Peter was beginning to sink, he rebuked them, you know. You, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? You have no faith, I think you told them. Why did you doubt? When we mix doubt with our faith, it, 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 becomes, un, it becomes contaminated. Praise God. And it kind of turns into fear. Praise God. And God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power. He said he's given us a spirit of power. Love and sound mind. As I said before, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of us. And he said greater things than what he did, he will do. So we have to go out and do it. Because we don't want to win the souls for the kingdom of God if, if um, every time God says, um, go, go and lay hands on that person, or go to, to, the, to that AIDS ward, or there might be someone with a, a plague in, in a hospital. Oh, we just went. <laughs> too scared. I'm going to catch it. Catch what? You're going to give some healing. You're going to give God some glory. Because if he sent you in the hospital, then he's protecting you. We have got Psalm 91 to stand on. No evil shall befall us. We shall any play come now or do one of the time for the Christians to wake up and, and do the job. We need to be cleaning out the hospitals. We need to be cleaning out the homes. Praise God, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, and not being afraid of these diseases because our God is greater than any disease. He is greater than any sickness, any pain. Praise God. Even if you got stopped by a needle, praise God, that, that someone had AIDS with and that was contaminated. Praise God. We can be like John G. Lake. You know, because I think when they had all these um, blue bonnet plagues and all these things, praise the name of Jesus, the man of God was not afraid of anything because he was fully persuaded that God was able to do that which he had promised. Praise the name of Jesus. So, so when all these people, when they, when they put all these, they took some samples from the people who had blue bonnet plagues and all these things, and they put it under this um, microphone, this um, whatever you call it, you can see all these germs and things alive. You know, praise God. And the man of God said, just put it on my hand. And it died. We're going to get to that point where every germ, every virus that touches our body dies instantly. Praise God. Because we just have to believe. We believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Be it according to your faith. Praise God. And you're going to increase your faith tonight. And you're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Because whenever we doubt, we're displeasing God. Because Hebrews 11 said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he's a reward of those who will reject his seek. Again. So I'm here to encourage you tonight, those of you who've been handing out leaflets, some of your hands have been getting numb, and you're thinking, I'm not going to go back, doors have been slamming in your face, I'm asking you to go again, go again, 
Jesus does thing go halfway to the cross and then turn back. You know, he said to the Father, if it be I will, that this cup pass, but nevertheless, let it be your will. When he's in the garden at uh, Gethsemane, you know, uh, even in the disciples, they fell asleep three times. You know, he ended up giving up on them because they were sleeping. He wanted them to pray so that their faith wouldn't fail them. Sometimes we have to pray that our faith wouldn't, wouldn't fail us. And, and, and he went, you know. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He went through all of these things and he didn't stop. So in the last days, we are going to be persecuted for our faith. We're going to be lying on. Praise God. Even close friends, brothers and sisters, we thought were standing in with you. But they're never going to leave you. Because in the last days, the body is our body of poor love. It's sad, but it's happening. Praise God. So we have to stand, stand on the promises of God, stand on our faith, and be faithful to Him like He was to us. Because those who endure to the end, you know, we will obtain the, the prize. We need to fight the good fight of faith. Praise God. Even Paul was at a time in his life when he wasn't sure whether to go or not. But, but then because the people needed him and decided to stay a bit longer, uh, we must be able to say, I've completed my course, I've fought the, the good fight of faith, I've I, I finished my course. Praise God, and we need to finish it with joy. Praise the name of Jesus. So it's when we're cleaning up the hospitals and, and things like that, and laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover, and miracles following the church, that we're walking in so much love that we're having like 3,000 people added to our meetings in a day, that we're not rushing God. Many people come to church, it's just rush, 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 rush. It's just routine. God is fed up with routine. Sometimes he wants to do a great work, but people are just, oh, well, my husband, I have to go home and cook up three and so on. Be flexible for God. Change your schedule and line it up with God. Praise God. And if God says, stay five minutes later, stay. Sometimes it might not make sense to you, but someone's life could be dependent on it. If God wakes you up and asks you to pray for someone, don't be selfish, pray. Many times there's a life and death situation. And we'll have to give an account to God. Praise God. Be led by the Holy Spirit. God might tell you to do some foolish, foolish things. Do it. Praise God, you know. Do it. Is that Zachariah? He, he, he didn't believe God. And, um, God had to be kind to him by making him dumb for a few months, you know, until the um, child was born. Praise God. You know, because it is, um, sometimes God has to hide things from us because of our amount of unbelief and doubt. He would mess up the plans. So sometimes he can't reveal as many things as he wants to tell us because it will blow your mind because his thoughts and his plans, the words are our thoughts of good, good, good thoughts. Praise God to give our end the final outcome. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll just wrap up. I don't even know how long I've been up here. Praise, praise God. The sermon has gone in a completely, um, almost in a completely different way. Now, thank God because we have to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. This is the word that you need now because this word is coming straight from the throne of God. Praise the name of Jesus. I, I'm not just here just making stuff up. This is what God is saying. Praise the name of Jesus. Verse 5 as I begin to close. Amen. This is Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 5. Thus says the Lord God to those bones. Behold, I will cause breath and spirit to enter you and you shall live. So I say to you, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And with long life will God satisfy you and show you his salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, you know, if it, if, if it looks like if your finances are drying up, I'm here to tell you God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If it looks like if all your children are heading to hell, I'm here to tell you that they, they, they will be saved. Praise God. Because Christ is the peace of our children. They are taught of the Lord. Just keep on teaching. Keep on praying, you know. Um, Luke, Luke 11, he says to seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking. To everyone who asks, receive. To anyone who knocks, it will be open. Don't give up. God didn't give up on you. Don't, don't give up on someone else. Who gives you the right to give up on someone? Don't condemn anyone. Once we're alive, there's hope. Praise God. And even there's, there's hope after that because some people might be a sinner and they might die and God might use you. You might be the one who might raise them up. And, and, and then someone ministers them and they can get saved. Praise God. So, so no more let's condemn people and write them off. Praise God. God didn't throw us away at the first sign of, of trouble. But we must not throw others away at the first sign of trouble. Keep on praying for them. Bless them with your words. The blessing is to speak well of others or to speak well of something. Praise God. Just because Jesus cursed that fig tree, praise God. But we don't want to be going around cursing people. We want to bless them. Praise God. Because he said with that fig tree, no one shall eat fruit thereof. You know, and from, from that day, you know, the next day when they came, about 12 hours later, Peter saw the fig tree that withered up. It had withered up instantly, but he didn't see it yet. 
but it, 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 it withered up from the roots upwards. Praise God. So, so sometimes you speak to that pain, praise God, and it feels like if the pain is intensifying, praise God, if you pray for that person, it seems like if they're getting worse, it's just the Holy Spirit is dealing with them. Praise God. And, and everything is fine. And, and that person is healed by the stripes of Jesus. But that, that, sometimes there's a demon behind that pain, and that demon is about to come out, and the person is feeling, you know, they're worse before they can feel better. It is like someone, they fall down the stairs and they might not feel so much pain in the beginning and the next day they might feel a bit stiff as this cup is on. But the healing process is there. So don't cast your confidence and speak negative stout words against God or what you pray for. Just keep standing. Keep your words lined up with the word of God or bite your lips if you have to bite them. God help us. Put a watch over our, our mouths. We ask this in Jesus' name. Praise God. Verse 6. And I will, I will lay signs upon you and bring up flesh and upon you and cover you with skin and I will put breath and spirit in you and you dry bones shall live and you shall know and understand and realize that I am the Lord, the sovereign ruler who calls for loyalty and obedient service. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So he was prophesying in faith. He wasn't just speaking empty idle words, and he was speaking the word of God. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any two edges, so that it never returns to God void. Praise God. God watches over his word to perform it. And as I prophesied, there was a thundering noise. Behold, a shaking and trembling and a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and behold, there was sinews upon the bones, and flesh upon them, and the skin was so, and the skin covered them over, and there was no breath or spirit in them. Then said he to me, you know, it's just like when, when Jesus created the man, he had to breathe the breath of life into them. He even breathed on his disciples at, um, at one stage. Praise God. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath and spirit, son of man, and say to the breath of the spirit. Thus says the God, come from the four winds, all breath and spirit, and breathe upon these slaves that they may live. So sometimes we need the Holy Spirit to breathe upon us. We need him to breathe in our governments. We need him to breathe upon our country. Praise God, all these laws that they're making up. We need the breath of life of God to breathe. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I prophesied and he commanded, sorry, so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath and spirit came into the bones and they lived and stood up upon their feet and exceedingly great horse. Praise God. Okay, this will be the last verse. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Oh, just can't remember it more. Our hope is not cut off because once we are with God, we have hope. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back home to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, your sovereign ruler, when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O oh, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your land. Then you shall know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord, that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Praise God. So be encouraged. If God encourages you to go and raise someone from the dead, go and do it. These are the last days, and we have to do the greater works. Praise God. Because if God says we'll do greater works than what he did, we have to believe him and go and do it. Signs and wonders is not just for uh, uh, the book of Acts. It's for us today. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never lies. Father, we just thank you for your wonderful word, God. We thank you that you came forth with power, might, and authority. We thank you that our faith has been built up to a new level, God. And I pray that you'll help us to use our faith, God, to walk in love, because faith worked by love. Praise God. And, and that we will just do what you tell us to do, that we'll not be selfish and think if you send us into a hospital that has plagues, that we will be afraid to go in, because someone's life may be dependent on us, God. Let us do your work, God. Help, help us to heal the sick cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. And freely as we receive your gifts, God, help us to freely give, God. And the gifts not to be used to show off, but for your glory, for your excellence. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In the wonderful, precious, and perfect name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.